And so I would call him. I was so jealous that he got all this attention from her. And so I would uh, call him with buddies of mine and talk to him for, I don't know, upwards of an hour on the you phone. You were the catfisher. Yeah. Have you at, ever at told anybody else that has, story? Does he know? Only a couple. Well, I told him at the end. I did it for about 10 days. And I would even wow. be like, come sit next to me at lunch today. And like, hold my hand. And, like, I, and then know, he would go and hold her hand, for right? For sure, yeah. This is backfiring on you because you weren't splitting them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he couldn't hear me eating Pop-Tarts over the phone. But uh, <laughs> just double fisting those things. But he, uh, I finally just told him one day. I was like, hey, man, uh, Ev... Evan, it's uh, it, it's me, and he was like, "Yeah, right." And then I started doing the voice to him, and, and his face was priceless. Oh man, still a friend to this day. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, cool. he's <laughs> actually. You know, what's funny is he, uh, my my high school to a uh, little bit of college girlfriend, um, who we are all friends with. Uh, he's married to now. So, so it's still there's still a love triangle surrounding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you are still single. Yeah, single, but loving it. Uh, okay, yeah. single. This minute, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I single, did all, not I, single, I single, 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 not single, not single, not single, single, yeah, which is the name of my next book. Uh, after <laughs> if, if what if does well, current lives, current lives, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's tough though in LA, man. They're uh, women are, are tough to please, you know. Shania Twain, I feel like, is responsible for a lot of this mess of like being able to tough to please you women because it's like, you know, they just as soon as she started writing songs, it was like, you know. So you have a car, Pff, that don't impress me much. It's like, all right, well, a car's not an easy thing, you know, yeah. to acquire. I had to make several payments on that. but And for a, a young up-and-coming comedian, that's a big that's thing a huge to have deal. a car. I need yeah. a new car. I so, have a, two, you know, no so girl. she started singing that that wasn't any good. Haven't you heard all her songs? I mean, all I, the, yeah. I, I, that Impress Me Much song is full of, there's even a line where she's like, you know, so you're Brad Pitt. That don't impress me much. Yeah. <laughs> she's single too now, by the way. Yeah, is she? So, yeah, yeah. So it's like that's if, the yeah, get if Brad Pitt can't even do it for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need a new car though. If you guys have any suggestions, no girls looking at me getting out of mind like, oh, did that guy just get out of a Ford Escape with two dents in it and cashews stuck in the seatbelt? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he got snacks at least. I like snacks. Now you you were got just, snacks. You were just in a big movie, so that probably you get a pretty good. You would think for that. Yeah, I made twenty million dollars, but I blew it on deer penis. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pills. It's the pills that are pricey. No, the, the movie was awesome though. Have you the guys heat seen it? with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy for sure. Mm -hmm. Tons of tons of great stars. Packed with comedy juggernauts. It just came out on DVD. I didn't see it in the theater, but I want to try to appreciate see it that on joke. DVD. Yeah, see it on DVD. <laughs> I don't see many. I'm not a great. He gets a lot of money from the DVD sales. Yeah. Yeah. What's the last movie you saw? Shanghai Nights. And I wouldn't be, and, and I wouldn't be right. upset if you said that. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm see trying that. to start a friendship here. I'm trying to think what the last uh, movie Love, I paid to see was. Love and Basket. Oh, you sneak in, huh? Well, uh, well, the, well, the you do that trick where you take the the the, the corner because you know sometimes the uh, I used to do this as a kid where the the, uh, the ticket tear guys all you could do was like just flash a ticket come out of the bathroom and flash a ticket and they go oh cool you were already here so my buddies and i we'd go into the bathroom find ticket stubs out in the street and walk them like hey hey and they're like oh yeah and one time i ripped off the corner of a piece of toilet paper and held it up i was like let me just see if this will work and the kid the God God bless you right in yeah he just was like cool man yeah but what was the last movie you saw I'm trying to think. Uh, How many X's did it have next to it? <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't go see those. Sure. I, they're right in his home. Yeah, yeah. I don't pay for those. My buddy, let me borrow the I password. I don't even think those theaters uh, exist anymore. Okay, again, I don't believe you. I saw, I saw Lincoln. Uh, but I, well, I saw at least the first hour. I fell took, asleep. Yeah, I took yeah. a snooze through. I, that's the problem. See, you put me in a dark place. <laughs> With the popcorn, or even the smell of popcorn, even if I'm not eating it, I get sleepy. <laughs> I really he do. Go, he doesn't I go mean, to the zoo anymore either. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean the I nocturnal just, cages. Yeah. Well, also there's no popcorn for those snakes, so that's got to be kind yeah, of yeah. There's not a many bummer. that that I uh, that I see. I will admit. All right, well, I, I, think, I will watch yours over the holidays. I appreciate for sure. that. I think you'll like it, man. Melissa kills it, and her and Sandra are just you know perfect together. And then and then you got me with a beard and. I'm getting grinded on by my first day of shooting was getting my face shoved in Sandra Bullock's cleavage. How about that? That was your you're in you're in first day. Do you remember that scene, Spike? Uh, I, I I'm quietly haven't seen the movie either. And oh, I'm just, okay. I'm too smart. Well, you know, no, no, no. By the way, <laughs> I was send you a script. I was notified I was coming into a show where nobody yeah. knows who Wait, or what you I You just done. rented like <laughs> ten copies out there right <laughs> yeah. now. I mean, Why don't you shower <laughs> us with a palette of those movies? Yeah, it's really? not a bad idea. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Shirley MacLaine knows that. <laughs> have we have, have no <laughs> idea who she was. Either. <laughs> so so hang on a second, man. So you are for those who've seen the movie. This is a very cool scene. 
Did you yeah, have? Did you read for the part? Yeah, I did. I read about three times. And you have to. You're competing for parts. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm uh, auditioning heavily uh, in uh, in Hollywood, and uh, you know, you get. I'd say the last three years, I've been in the nice rotation of. You're really just trying to build fans of all these casting directors and get on these short lists. The woman who cast the Heat is Allison Jones, and she's you know she cast The Office and Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Bridesmaids, and Superbad, nice. and and uh, you know Anchorman, and uh, I love all those movies. She's incredible. She's like yeah. the best of the I, best, and so and so I, you want to do a good job for her. Yeah. Yeah, and you all. Yeah, and so. So I've when been, they tell you you're gonna Bronski with Sandra Bullock, do you like think all right now? Yeah, like I'm like, yo, I better take my deer penis uh, pills. Yeah, and yeah really but I mean, get revved up. yeah. Sorry. But you really have to. Uh, obviously, you you, you got to get over the wow, what a thrill, and then you got to get right to work. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, you. I think at this point, I uh, you like to think you're professional enough to not be a little starstruck. But like meeting them, her or her Melissa for the first time was yeah a little um, intimidating. But then you just kind of. Um, I don't know that first scene. Like as soon as we did a lot of improv in, in one of the scenes, and they kind of like laughed at what I was doing. I was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. and Melissa kind of said, like, oh, she's like, that was really funny. What, you, like, do that again or whatever. Right, because if they think you have something to offer, yeah, that's and then, the best. And then I was kind of like, all right, I settled in. It's the same thing like a, doing stand up. Like, you know, if you're doing a new room, and as soon as you get a couple laughs, or you're doing a corporate event that you're unsure how it's going to go, and and uh, I did you one get of those good with, feedback. Yeah, and you get a couple laughs, you kind of settle in, and that's how it was uh, on set. And uh, but having my face shoved in her cleavage, that was it, in the the dance scene. Where I'm, I'm a club owner, and they're trying to uh, bug my phone, and uh, so they're trying. Sandra's trying to dance up all on me to get my attention, and uh, that was not scripted. It was like very chaotic, and she just grabbed my face, and as it's going down, I mean, it was happening in slow motion, and like Fat Kid Adam was seeing this and just being like, it's all better now, as my face was like going down. <laughs> and there's no, I mean, this is real Sandra Bullock. She doesn't use a stunt, a boob cleavage. double. Stunt <laughs> boob. Yeah. They I mean, bring in. I mean, that might be a Hollywood secret. You this don't have is to. Steve. Steve will be playing the role of Sandra. <laughs> I want you to sell it. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? There's probably stunt boobs out there. Imagine if it was Melissa McCarthy's cleavage. You'd still be there. I mean, you'd be, you'd be Wow, there. too soon. But I'm sorry. Ba, 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 ba. Too soon. I think, <laughs> he cannot have this conversation yeah, with you. Yeah. I think they're she's promoting the DVD. Yeah. I think she's, her. by the way, Love probably her. the greatest the physical best. comedian. Listen to him trying to reel himself. No. <laughs> yeah. when it comes but anyway, face, if you could around. get her to accept my Facebook friend request. When, when it comes to physical comedy, <laughs> yeah. when it comes to physical comedy, she hosted Saturday she Night Live, it. and she was the best. Oh, I mean, she's, she's, yeah, she's, uh, well, she came from the Groundlings, which is, you know, yep. the, uh, Phil Hartman, Will Ferrell, all those guys. Uh, she's got a, the huge sketch improv background, and, and she's just killer. I mean, that there's the, the last scene before I, um, I don't spoil it, but, um, Something happens to me, but we uh, we kind of went back and forth for a while. Uh, it's, I think there's a lot of that in the DVD extra stuff because they, cut out, they stuff. cut out so much. Yeah. He just you know Paul Feig, the guy who directed and directed Bridesmaids, and he just let us improvise a ton. So I mean, there was like that last scene. Melissa and I were just going jab for jab, and it was uh, it was awesome. But man. you know what? That's good to know. And I know there's many different ways of doing a comedy, and yeah. I've heard other uh, other uh, comedians uh, and big ones uh, in interviews talk about. Uh, sometimes it's really very tightly scripted, and they just on it, and they know yeah. how to make it funny. Yeah. Sometimes though, uh, they know they recognize that we have comics here. We have to let them be themselves, and then we have to harvest the stuff that sure. works incredibly well. Well, so, I think you're talking about Airbud Five and Six. Those yes, were exactly. some of the tightest comedy <laughs> scripts <laughs> in in town, and well, they were like, "Hey, great let, writing. Hey, well, you don't and, mess with it. <laughs> yeah. you know? And when do you get a dog that can deliver Seriously. day in and day out? Seriously. You know what he ate? What's that? No, uh, deer penis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Set me up, man. No, he sets up for cold out. Softball up. Uh, couldn't even hit it out I'm of the not park. a professional. I am not Jesus, a professional. Jesus, man. <laughs> Step it like, up. I want to ask quickly before you what go. Joe, we know you, you go to, we know you go to intensive training every night. Yeah. It's whole not a professional. Well, I was reading a text. A text somebody wanted me to ask you. He says, are you oh. really Ozzy's neighbor? Ozzy and Pat Boone? Somebody thinks you live next to those guys down in L.A. Oh, Pat Pat Boone. Pat Moot? Pat Boone. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. Pat Boot runs a video store. Ozzy Osbourne and Pat Boone are next door neighbors in, in LA. Oh, really? And somebody says, "Is he really live next door to Ozzy and Pat Boone?" So I don't know. Maybe. I didn't even know that was. I mean, um, if you, obviously you don't. Then maybe that's unreal. what they think about everyone from LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's one of those. Be. There's a lot of those general LA stereotypes. Where they're like, "Hey, so like, do you? Re is there really like a Quiznos where oh, they like, give you like free on. avocado?" <laughs> okay, <down there?" laughs> I see. Hold on. They thought we were talking to Adam Lambert. That's totally different. Oh, yeah, well, he's Adam Lambert <laughs> and Shirley MacLaine. I don't know if I should. 
take that, be offended or take that as a compliment. Just, that's the what problem. is Adam Lambert By the way, saying? Yeah, what's his song? Uh, two, oh, what's that? Because baby, you're a firework. Isn't that Adam yeah, Lambert? that's right. Oh, Katie. It's Katy Perry. You know what? Same thing. <laughs> Katy Perry. <laughs> so hang on. So you also do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Which is a very big. It's called About talk. Last Night. You can go to aboutlastnightpodcast.com or uh, get on iTunes or Stitcher. I mean, we've had a lot of big, Paul Feig was on, uh, Dane Cook, Winnie Cummings, Joy McIntyre from The New Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's great, man. So number nine on iTunes, and I do it uh, with a dwarf comedian named Brad Williams, and he's great. He's hilarious, yeah. and uh, and he's also a dwarf. And having a best friend who's a dwarf is maybe one of the I highly recommend and he is it. Truly, your, one you guys are truly buddies. Two, went to college together. Uh, com- I mean, traveled on the road with him, and uh, being friends. I don't know if you you should you should get one. Yeah, I'm not saying like well, get your own dwarf. Well, I'm not saying you buy it on eBay or uh, steal one because that's seven years bad luck. But if you uh, if you do get one, because people look at them like Lamborghinis, man. We're walking around, they're yeah. like, I want one for my birthday. Single, you know? <laughs> you're single in L.A. That's the wingman. Right. That's oh, the he's dream the perfect wingman. wingman. Right there. And, and way easier to take care of and less finicky than a Dalmatian. True. Yeah. yeah. Although Dan, dogs are, it's um, unbelievable. We'll be walking down the street sometimes and people would, and dogs will like just start barking at him and, uh, and he'll bark back. Uh, which is really great, <laughs> and which which freaks the owners out because they're like, wait a minute, like because it's w- when you're not around. That dwarf on a leash, <laughs> exactly, dude. I mean, you people create these stereotypes or things that ha- like John Stamos is. He did a show where he uh, with Bob Saget and Stamos was there, and it turns out Stamos has like a fear of little people. And so Brad went up to him and started trying to hump his leg, and Stan almost <laughs> legitimately like started to panic, He's freaking him out because you don't know what's going to happen. Like you create these like possibilities when you don't know the facts and figures. You're like, hey man, if a dwarf humps my leg, do I turn into stone? Like what happens at this point? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's a weird ending. I wasn't trying to. to you, that, yeah. no, you know what? <laughs> that was, <laughs> no no jokes past, here. Just facts. Well, I, is, only if it goes past. Is dawn. dwarf okay? I mean, I thought it was a little person. Little I mean, per- yeah, well, um, I can say dwarf. Yeah, because you got a buddy. It's <laughs> like okay. yeah, he's a Adam buddy. Ray. He's my life partner. Adam Ray has a dwarf card. <laughs> Oh, that, right. That's actually great. You should get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, check out Adam. Check out his podcast. We'll link to it at bobrivers.com. And check him out tonight at 8 o'clock, tomorrow on Saturday, 8 and 10 30, Tacoma Comedy Club. Adam, it's really nice to meet you. You and guys are awesome. You're, you're like a, a hometown boy done really, really good. <laughs> Thanks, so buddy. We want to keep uh, seeing you. Uh, keep keep it up. I will. And I'll right. uh, come back anytime. Come in every time you are in town. <laughs> I will. As All long right. as we have Deer Penis and McLean books. Yeah, take that. 